Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. Today I want to work on some technique, shifting. Now practicing technique uh, can be a, I don't know, it just can be a hard thing for some people to grasp why do I need to do that. You know, the sort of answer or the, you know, the question or the statement, there we go, sometimes is, man, I just want to be able to play, you know, whatever, a good blues line or a simple rock bass part or I don't want to have to worry about a lot of chops. But we're not talking about developing a lot of chops for some unknown reason. We're talking about learning to play physically on the instrument, and in this lesson, shifting so that you don't have to look at your fingers all the time. If you can just play the bass more comfortably, simply, the larger term, master of the instrument, the more you have, the easier it'll be to play music. And yes, we need to practice those fundamentals, just like a good athlete works on footwork and, and arm slot and all that kind of stuff. So here's a real simple one. Watch this. Good, major scale. Now watch this. That's a very common shift here to here. <laughs> We're simply doing it on, down here. Watch it again. Get your bass out and play with me. Here we go. Let's do it with some metronome. Three and four. Cool. Now, if you're just watching me and not playing, it's going to get boring real quick, I promise. If you'll play with me, you'll dig it. Now, this one's simple enough, what we just did there, that you can just sort of see it and go, I've got it. But what we need to do is practice this kind of physical motion, this shift, this two fret shift, enough that it becomes muscle memory. And let's do it. Let's start to do that without shifting around the instrument, just in this one position, but with our eyes closed. Watch this. Sure, you'll start to feel that distance. So let's do it a little bit here. Play along with me. Do it a couple of times, watch it, and then close your eyes and keep doing it. And just remember that feeling. Two, ready, play. Good, let's stop. Now that's the type of motion you need to do for hours. You say, Jim, I can already do it. Well, let's do it a bunch and then let's start doing it all over the instrument. And by the way, there's more shifts than that one, but that one's an extremely common one. So let's do it again here and I'm going to count. You don't have to, but I'll do it. We'll do it eight times and we'll take a break. Then we'll do it eight times, take a break, then eight times. We're trying to build some muscle memory here and some stamina on the instrument. Okay, play with me. Two, three, four. Got your eyes closed? This is time four. wasn't too hard, was it? I'm sure that very quickly you could close your eyes, you could remember that feel. Keep your fingers spread out, keep your hands, uh, you know, in a good posture because we're going to want to learn to play faster and all around. Now let's simply go up a fourth to F and let's try it again. Now you realize the distances are a little different, aren't they? Of course. And by the way, it's not an infinite sort of amount of things one needs to memorize. We've only got this distance right here, and it's always split up in the same amount. By the way, people say, Jim, how do you teach and how, how do your students learn to play the fretless bass so well in tune? 
Well, we learn to develop good hand position on a fretted bass. Then it's just a matter of going to that fretless bass and keeping good, maintaining good posture. Here we go, key of F. Play with me. If you have to watch it, fine. But very quickly, get to where you're closing your eyes. One, two, and three, and four. And... That's because I was thinking about what I was going to tell you next, and that is, let's go uh, up cycle of force, but let's stay on the same string. Why? Because the distances are different up here than they were here. So we could have just gone to B flat right here, but the distance is roughly the same. For the moment, let's practice a different feel, a different, sh same shape, but a different spacing to it. Here we go. Let's play it together on B flat. One and two and three, four. just talking. I think you all know that. I've seen people, uh, and I've seen books where it says, do this here, then learn to do it in all keys, and that's it. No, I'm a believer in we need to do it. This is called practice. By the way, the title, Real Bass Lessons, I decided that a long time ago because I wanted, because I wanted my videos, these, to feel like a real bass lesson. So get your bass out and play with me, okay? They're only about five, six, seven, eight minutes, sometimes ten minutes long max. You can do that. Next key would be E flat, wouldn't it? By the way, can you imagine that we want to do this real fast, all over the bass, only one time in each one? Sure, we want to develop a physical memorization of the spaces. I mean, just ask yourself, how does someone play in tune, in time, and moving real quickly? Well, they've practiced it a bunch. It's not improvisation. No, it's deliberate practice. Good music is not casual. It's very focused, okay? Here we go, E flat. And here's that shape. Obviously, it's a wider space down here than it is up here, huh? Let's do it. Very quickly, start to close your eyes. Two and three and four. shaky just don't, don't stop just open your eyes and readjust your hands and then close your eyes again next key is a flat two three four Cool. 
you notice I didn't click the metronome on that time? We should have that in our head going tick, tick, and know that tempo, okay? Key of D flat. Two, ready, play. finish the cycle force out by doing it only two times in each key. One and two and ready, play. Now spread your fingers out down here. Back to home base. Cool. Now, this is the type of practice that good players do to develop mastery over the fingerboard. I know, I know, everybody wants to start with cooler stuff and faster stuff and, you know, and hipper things and stuff, but, but, but don't you think we should work on fundamental basic shifting before we start to try advanced stuff? And by the way, if you don't think that, you just uh, don't understand how learning is. You can learn to do anything you want, but it has to be built from the bottom up one block at a time. And if you take the brick out of the oven too soon down here, well, guess what? It all starts crumbling as you get a little bit higher. So you need to work on this type of stuff all the time. Tempo? Sure, of course we go faster. But there is no point where the more complicated and more faster practicing takes the place of the more simple and solid practicing. It just goes on top of that. So that's a good practicing exercise for you. I challenge you to do it an hour a day for 30 days and then simply tell me that it wasn't worth it. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing, but I've never had anyone do it. I've had people do that and say, my God, Jim, that's incredible. I need to do some more stuff. What do I do now? Yeah, of course. We always need to build a foundation. You realize the higher we, we want to go, the wider the foundation has to be. Simple as that, just like that iceberg. So just get into this and just play, play, play. Play along with me, okay? Cool, fire it up. <laughs>